Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to properly count your knitting stitches. So, counting your stitches is an important thing that you need to know how to do, especially if you're looking to move on to any kind of slightly more complicated patterns other than very simple things, because in a lot of patterns you're going to need to know how to count those stitches because a lot of patterns give instructions for okay do this many stitches and then do something else and that's just one example there are multitudes of different ways that a pattern could need you to count your stitches to know you know how many you have on the needle total or how many you have before a certain point in the knitting so counting stitches is a very important skill that basically every single knitter needs to know. So if you are a beginner knitter, most commonly you're going to need to know how to count your stitches so that you can tell where you are in the pattern and tell if you have the correct number of stitches on your needle for whatever row or round you just did. And if your stitch count is off, meaning you have the wrong number of stitches than what the pattern says you're supposed to, then if you keep knitting from that point, even though you did not have the correct number of stitches at that point, then it could totally throw off the rest of your project. It could mess up the size, it could mess up the stitch pattern, it could mess up all kinds of things if you don't check to make sure that you have the correct number of stitches. Um, when the pattern gives a stitch count and the pattern says at the end of the row you should have 27 stitches or whatever, then if you don't have 27 stitches, if you have 28 stitches, then that can mess up the rest of your project. So that's why it's important to know how many stitches you have and to know um, what the pattern requires as far as how many stitches you should have at that point. So I have a small swatch here of stockinette stitch. I've got some super bulky yarn here so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to show you how to count the stitches that are on the needle, as well as how to count the stitches that are already worked in the fabric on both the knit side and the purl side. Alright, so let's first talk about how to count the stitches that are already on the needle. I'm going to go ahead and move the working yarn down here so it's not in the way. And what we're looking for is we want to know how many stitches are on the needle at the moment so that we can compare to whatever the pattern that we're using says we need to have. So a stitch on the needle is basically one of these loops. Okay, so let's look at this first one for example. This first strand of yarn, this is the first stitch, it starts at the front of the work, goes over the top of the needle to the back. So that is one stitch right there. So every time I have one of these strands of yarn or loops of yarn around my needle, that is one stitch. So if we look at what we have on the needle right now, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 stitches on my needle at this point. So what happens if you look at your pattern and your pattern says, like for example, if my pattern says I'm supposed to have 11 stitches and I have 12? Well, chances are if I have too many stitches, I've either added a stitch where I wasn't supposed to, or else I have omitted a decrease, meaning I have forgotten to take away a stitch or decrease a stitch. So if I have a pattern that is gradually decreasing down to a smaller width and I have too many stitches on my needle for the row that I should be on, then I have forgotten somewhere. I've forgotten a decrease. So I have forgotten to like work two of those stitches together into one to make some of those stitches uh, go away or make, make the item smaller. So let's say I have 12 stitches on the needle and the pattern says I should have 13. Well, if that is the case, then usually that means I have forgotten an increase or I have accidentally decreased a stitch. So if you've accidentally decreased a stitch, then that means that you have unintentionally or unknowingly 
worked two stitches together and you've made them into one instead of um, leaving them as two separate stitches. Or more commonly, um, if you have uh, too little or too few stitches, then you have forgotten or missed an increase somewhere. So your pattern is, has told you at some point to work an increase, which means you take one stitch and you turn it into more than one stitch. And if you've forgotten to work one of those, then that can be why you don't have enough stitches. And of course, if you don't have enough stitches on your needle, then that could also be caused by having accidentally dropped a stitch and not realized it. So if you've dropped a stitch somewhere, then um, all you need to do to find it is kind of just go like this and stretch the fabric. And you will be able to see because your drop stitch, wherever it is further down in the work, will unravel a little bit when you stretch the fabric. So that's how you find the stitch if you've dropped one. And so that is how we count the stitches that are on the needle. Now, if you have made a mistake like that, you've either dropped a stitch, um, accidentally worked an increase or a decrease, or missed an increase or a decrease, then the easiest thing to do is to, if you're not comfortable with um, unraveling just a column or two of stitches and then fixing the mistake further down and then picking the stitches back up and putting them on the needle, if you're not comfortable with that, then you'll just need to unravel however many rows you need to do to get back to that point. And if you're afraid of your stitches getting dropped as you unravel, then you can always use what they call a lifeline, which is basically a, um, a strand of a really thin, smooth, tightly spun yarn or thread. Crochet thread is a good one for that. But you basically take your lifeline, pretend this was my lifeline, and you're going to come through the row that you need to do and pick up the right leg or the right strand of each of those stitches in the row that you want to unravel back to. And then you would thread all of those stitches onto your length of string, which is your lifeline. And then by the time you take your needle out of the work and unravel it, then all your stitches will be held on that piece of string and you can just slip them back onto the needle to continue with your work. So now that we know how to count the stitches that are up here on the needle, we also need to know how to count the stitches that are already in the fabric here. And so when we do that, we need to keep in mind that each single stitch is going to appear as two strands and they make kind of a V shape like this. So if I um, if I look at just this one stitch right here, I have a V shape. I have one strand of yarn that comes this direction and meets in the middle and another strand of yarn that comes this direction and meets in the middle at the bottom. So this V shape right here is one stitch. And it looks like two strands of yarn, but this is actually just one loop. It goes up round, it goes behind this stitch in above it, and then comes back down. So this is one loop that makes that stitch. But it appears on the right side of the work, or on the knit side of the work, as a V shape um, made up of two strands, even though it's all one loop. So that is one knit stitch on the right side of the work. So if I were to come over here, and count all the stitches in this row down here. First of all, the edge stitch, unless you're doing something special to the edge stitch, um, it will look kind of a little bit wonky and um, maybe a little bit twisted, but that is totally normal. So unless you're working a selvage or some kind of little edge treatment as you go, that's going to make your edge stitch clean and straight, um, then it is going to look kind of like this. I did not work any kind of edge treatment on this because I wanted to show you what this looks like. But it is a pretty good idea to do that, especially if the edge of your work is going to be exposed in the project. So if I look at this first stitch, like let's look at this row right here. This is my edge stitch. It has a V shape right here, so that's one stitch. Here's another V shape. That's two stitches, three stitches, four stitches, five stitches, 
6 stitches, 7 stitches, 8 stitches, 9 stitches, 10 stitches, 11 stitches, and then this one over here is kind of turned a little bit, but this is the edge stitch and this is 12 stitches. So I still have 12 stitches down here in this row as well. So that's what it looks like on the knit side of the work. Now let's turn it over and look at the purl side because the purl side looks totally different. So on the purl side of the work, all we have is horizontal strands of yarn, horizontal bumps, and they are kind of curved a little bit. So the way to tell which bumps are the backs of the stitches and which bumps are not is that if you look at the stitches that are sitting on the needle right now, this right here, this little curved uh, strand of yarn that's on the back of this stitch, this is basically the top of a purl stitch. And I should also explain here, um, if you haven't heard this explained before, a knit stitch and a purl stitch produce the same structure as far as the stitch. The stitch is structured the same way, it's just that we're working it from a different direction. So for example, a knit stitch is basically a loop of yarn, and you pull a new loop of yarn through the previous loop from back to front, and that makes a knit stitch. If it's a purl stitch, then you have a loop of yarn, and you pull the new loop of, of yarn through it from front to back, and that's what makes it a purl stitch. But they're basically the same structure, it's just that when you work it from a different direction, then it faces the opposite way. So, for example, if I purl across this row, all the, the stitches that I purled are going to show up as knit stitches on the other side, because purling is basically working a knit stitch from the back. It, it does the same thing as if you were um, working a knit stitch, except it's, that's how you do it from the wrong side, from the back. So, if a purl stitch is basically like working a knit stitch from the back, then this is, even though it's a purl, it's basically a knit stitch on, on the other side. And, and likewise, every knit stitch shows up as a purl stitch on the other side because the purl is basically the back side of the stitch. The knit side is this side, and it's the front of the stitch. And then the other side of the stitch is the back, or the purl side. And so every time we work a purl stitch, like I said, it shows up as a knit stitch on the right side. Every knit stitch shows up as a purl stitch on the, right, on the wrong side. And likewise, if I were to knit a stitch on the purl side of the work, then it would show up as a purl stitch on the knit side. So it would, um, basically if you work a purl, then the back side or the bump side of the stitch is going to be facing whichever side of the work is facing you right now. And if you work a knit, then the V side of whatever side of the stitch is facing you is going to be facing you on, on the side of the work. So if I were to work a knit stitch on the purl side, then I would have a V shape instead of a bump. And then I would have in that same place, I would have a bump on the knit side instead of a V shape. So now that we understand kind of how the stitches are structured, we want to look at these purl bumps on the wrong side of the work. And if we look at them, we can see that some of the bumps curve downward like a rainbow, and some of the bumps curve upward kind of like a bowl shape. So the, the bumps, the purl bumps that curve upward like a rainbow, those are the backs of the stitches. That's the back of the top of a knit stitch on the other side, or what shows up as a knit stitch on the other side. So that's the, the actual stitch. That's what we're counting, is the ones that curve upward like a rainbow. The ones that curve downward like a bowl, those are not actually stitches. Those are um, that's when the yarn travels across the back to the next stitch. So if here's my stitch that's on the needle, it comes down, it goes through this upward curved strand, and then it comes across to go up into the next stitch.
which goes around the needle and comes back down through. So each one of these bowl-shaped curved strands is not a stitch in itself, but that is when the yarn travels across to go to the next stitch. So we're not counting these bowl-shaped strands as stitches because they're not. That's just when the yarn moves across to go to the next stitch. So we're only counting these upward curved bumps, which are the ones that are shaped kind of like rainbows. So if I'm going to count how many purl stitches I have in my row, I ha can count these little bumps, and it, it, it's basically the same as if I count V shapes on the other side of the, the knitting side of the work. So if I count in a row down here, I can see the bumps, the upward curved bumps as a single purl stitch. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then on the edge stitch, there isn't really a purl bump there. But there is still a stitch here because um, this is just basically um, where we turned the work. It's still a stitch. We did not slip a stitch, it's still purled. But it doesn't show up as a clear purl bump because we then turn to work the next row and it kind of twists it. So you don't really see a distinct purl bump on this column. But we know that this is a stitch column because there's a stitch at the top that's still on the needle. So we still have 12 stitches in that row. So now I'm going to pick this up and knit it a little bit, and I'm going to show you the difference between the purl stitches and the knit stitches as far as how they face on the needle. So I am going to knit across this row a little bit. And then I am going to, even though I'm on the knit side of the work, let's say your pattern tells you to purl one. So I'm going to bring the yarn to the front, purl that stitch, and I'm going to knit the rest of the way across so that we can look at this. Alright, so we can see where the purl stitch is in this row because it gives us that upward curved horizontal bump on this side of the work. So that's where the purl stitch is, and because we're working this from the right side or from the knit side, we know that that was a purl stitch. And we can also know that if we turn it around, it's going to look like a knit stitch on the other side. So here we have all these purl bumps because this is the purl side of the work. And then we have this V shape stuck in the middle of the row where we worked a purl on the knit side of the work and got this bump on the knit side and then it also shows up as a V shape on the purl side. So this, from the purl side, this appears as a knit stitch. So like I said, on the right side or on the knit side, we can see this very distinct purl bump showing up on that side of the work because we worked a purl on the knit row and it shows up as a knit stitch on the, the purl side. So this can be helpful if you are working a stitch pattern and your pattern tells you to, let's say it told me to knit five, purl one, and then knit six. Well, that's what I did. So you can count your stitches as you go, as far as as you're knitting, you can just count as you knit one, two, three, four, five, and then purl the stitch, and then count as you go one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's how you would normally count them as you go, but let's say you need to lay this down and then you need to pick it back up and say, okay, how many knit stitches did I do after the purl? So if we look, we have these V shapes on um, the bottoms of the stitches, which is basically where the loops on the needles are coming out of. So each loop on the needle is coming out of a stitch down here. And they're sitting right up against the needle. Those are the stitches that we just worked in the previous row. So we can look and say, okay, now this one does look a little bit twisted because it's the edge stitch, but we can still, if we pull it, you know, pull it taller a little bit, we can see that V shape. So here's one V shape, that's a knit stitch, two V shapes, another knit stitch, three, four, 
5. So now we can see we've got 5 V shapes, which that's 5 knit stitches. Here's our purl bump. That's our purl stitch, so we knit 5, we purled 1, and then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 knit stitches, or V shaped stitches, after the purl. So that's kind of how you can know um, how many stitches you did if you're working in pattern as far as if the pattern says knit X amount of stitches, do such and such, and then, you know, knit X amount of more stitches or purl stitches or whatever. So that is how we count how many stitches we've already done or how many stitches we did down further in the fabric um, as far as knowing how many we had total and how many we had before and after we did a certain uh, different type of technique. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you have ever had any problems with counting your stitches in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.